Hi listeners, welcome to the video lecture series on power electronics. In the previous video, we have seen the series connections of SCR and the voltage imbalancing problem which exists in the series connections of SCR. And we have seen a solution for it by using static voltage equalization circuits. But the static voltage equalization circuits may not be suited in all conditions. So we go for the next method called the dynamic voltage equalization circuit. Let us go into the lecture. Initially, we will be discussing on dynamic voltage equalization circuit in this video, and then we will go for how a parallel connected SCR operate. For further reading, you can follow this textbook in this page numbers. Let us go for dynamic voltage equalization circuits. This is what we have seen in our previous lecture. We have a thyristor, and across the thyristor, I have a resistance R. This resistance R will take care of the voltage imbalances in this thyristors. But this will take care only when the current through the SCR has become constant, which means only under the steady state condition. But during the dynamic conditions, that is when it is turning on and turning off, during that instance, this resistance may not help in making the voltage across the SCRs equal. In that case, a dynamic voltage equalization circuit comes into a picture which is needed during the turn on and turn off process. So this circuit is what I call it as a dynamic voltage equalization circuit and this what we have seen already is the static voltage equalization circuit. A simple resistor as I told that is not cannot maintain equal voltage distribution under transient condition. So shunt capacitors play a vital role in maintaining the voltage across the SCRs equal during the transient conditions that is turn on and turn off time. Let us assume that once the SCR has been turned on, the current will start flowing in this direction. So these two resistance will take care of the voltage distribution of these two thyristors. But during the instant before it is turned on or it is going to turn off, what will happen if I use these two? These capacitance and resistances in across the SCR with this diode, the current will start flowing in this direction and it will try to charge this capacitor and it will come out. So these two capacitance will get charged. So SCR in the forward blocking state, when it is in the forward blocking state, capacitor gets charges to a voltage existing across the SCR. Once SCR has been turned on, the capacitor will discharge heavy current through the SCR. It will try to discharge the heavy current through the SCR. In order to limit this discharging current, a damping resistance RC is used and it also damps out high frequency oscillations. Diode D bypasses the RC during charging time. Because of this diode, the current will not flow through this resistance while during charging. So it will forward bias, it will charge in this direction. This RC will not be come into picture when the capacitance is charging. So this will make quick charging of this capacitance. That is why this diode has been used in this particular uh, dynamic voltage equalization circuit. We have derived the expression for this R already in our previous derivation. Now these components are new to us. So let us in that the very important component is this capacitor. Now I am going to derive an expression for this capacitance C in order to make the voltage across these two SCRs equal during the transient condition. Now let us go into derivation or calculation of the capacitance C. Thyristor with the least reverse recovery time will share the highest transient voltage. Let us assume that the thyristor T1 is having a recovery time of T1 whereas thyristor T2 is having a recovery time of T2. So the thyristor T1 is having least recovery time. So this could able to block, this could able to share the highest transient voltage. So because of that, this thyristor may get damaged very fastly when compared with this thyristor. So we have to avoid this condition for which we am putting a capacitance C across the thyristors. So this is the extra charge. If you look at this shaded portion is the extra charge which is available in the circuit which we want to minimize in order to make the 
voltage sharing of the two thyristors equal in this case scr1 has the least recovery time which i told already so that voltage let it be v1 is equals to vbm that is the it is the maximum voltage highest transient voltage that it can withstand let it be vbm we know that charge in a capacitor is equals to q is equals to cv change in charge this shaded portion change in charge is delta q which is equal to this c is going to be fixed so c into delta v so from this let me get an expression delta v is equals to delta q by c which is a simple simplification from this expression if delta q indicates the charge stored in c1 difference in the charge stored in c1 and c2 then delta v is the voltage across the thyristors difference in voltage across the thyristors c1 and c2 so hence delta v is equals to delta ib into r this is wrongly typed here it is ib into r so delta v is delta ib into r and already we have derived an expression for vbm using the static voltage equalization from the previous video so vbm is equals to the expression is already derived in this delta ib into r is delta v so i substitute it so vs plus n minus 1 into delta v by n since delta v is equals to delta q by c from this expression delta v is equals to delta q by c instead of this delta v i substitute delta q by c and take this n common from this i derive an expression for c which is n minus 1 into delta q divided by n into vbm minus vs so this is how we calculate the expression for c and this particular value of c has to be put across the values of across the thyristors in order to maintain equal voltage during the transient conditions the derating factor is given by percentage d is equals to 1 minus thing efficiency 1 minus efficiency so efficiency is vs divided by n into vbm into 100 vbm is the maximum voltage withstanding capability of the highest transient voltage withstanding capability of the device so thing efficiency is 1 minus d into 100 so 1 minus d it is all 1 minus of this one will get cancelled so string efficiency is given by vs divided by n into vbm into 100 where vs is the string voltage string voltage vbm is the highest transient voltage across the device so these two formulas with the c formula and the r formula which we had derived in the previous video are the important formulas for analytical problem session so dynamic equalization can be solved by using a capacitance whereas static equalization method uses a resistance to solve the voltage imbalancing problem now let us go for parallel operation of scrs so when we will be connecting the scrs in parallel when the current required by the load is more than the rated current of a single scr then scrs will be connected in parallel but when connecting in parallel it is expected that the iv characteristics of all the scrs connected in parallel should be of identical in nature but practically it will it is not possible here let us consider two scrs connected in parallel and i am supposed to have this i1 is equal to i2 but it will not let us look into that the iv characteristics of scr1 is something like this and iv characteristics of scr2 is something like this for the same terminal voltage the scr1 carries current i1 whereas scr2 carries current i2 i1 is greater than i2 which means more current will flow through this device and less current will flow through this device so this device will get uh, will be used more more amount of current because of that this scr may get damage very fastly when compared with this so there should be some procedure to equalize the current distribution in the case of parallel operation of scr now let us discuss some of the common problems which occur during the parallel operation simultaneous turn on if all the scrs are connected in parallel if n scrs are connected in parallel then all the scrs must be simultaneously turned on if there is a delay between one and another then the uh, then the scr which is later switched on will take only minimum amount of current 
then same temperature rise if n number of scs are connected in pa parallel then they should operate at the same temperature this can be achieved by mounting parallel unit of parallel unit onto a common heat sink heat sink is used to dissipate the heat from the device to the atmosphere so if it is connected to a common heat sink this same temperature rise problem can be avoided then placing scrs let us assume that i want i am having three scrs in my circuit i am placing in this way and in this way this is an unsymmetrical way of placing which means that the center scr will receive will have more inductance and more flux linkages because this is also current carrying conductor and this is also current carrying conductor so because of that the more flux will be linked with this middle scr hence less amount of current flows through the middle scr compared with the outer two so because of that this will not get affected more whereas 1 and 3 will get damaged very soon so in order to avoid this problem we can have a symmetrical spacing which is something like this where all the three are equally spaced this this distance this distance and this distance all the three distances are equal whereas here this distance and this distance are equal whereas the distance between 1 and 3 is more when compared with the other distances so this way of spacing is not allowed whereas this way of spacing is can be easily avoid the problem of flowing current flowing through the scr so this is one method of doing uh, current sharing Uh, giving a solution to the current sharing problem so the solution to that is i can have a static current sharing by putting a resistance in series and i can have a dynamic current sharing by putting a inductance in series there in case of uh, series connections we have resistances across the scr and capacitance across the scr here we have resistances in series and inductance in series so this is what the main difference between the uh, uh, sharing the current and sharing the voltage in this video we have discussed about the dynamic voltage equalization circuit of series connected scr necessity of parallel connections of scrs and also we have discussed about the various methods to solve the parallel connections parallel current sharing uh, problems so here the three important things here one is voltage sharing can be statically compromised and dynamically compromised static compromise requires a resistance across it dynamic compromise requires a capacitance across it in the case of parallel connection series resistance will solve current sharing under static and dynamic current sharing requires a inductance in series that is what all about this lecture and we will look into the analytical problems on series and parallel connections of scr in the next session thank you for your patient hearing thank you mm -hmm.